What's going on YouTube? Simwat2000 here bringing you episode 2 of the Late Game Strategy Tips series for Fortnite Battle Royale. I'm putting these videos together to help those who are just starting out playing Fortnite Battle Royale or those players who find themselves panicking in late game situations. I hope you find true value in these videos. Even if you just learn one thing, I hope you can learn something from each episode. Please comment below on topics that you'd like me to cover in future episodes, and I'll be sure to do that. Please be sure to subscribe and hit the notification button to be notified every time I post a future video. Thank you. So right now we have 17 people remaining in the game. We do have a fairly small circle uh, for 17 people to be remaining. I had a teammate get killed early on in the game. He's no longer playing because he's completely dead. I have a teammate who's knocked. And I have a teammate who is low on health and he just got knocked. So what you'll see me do is put a wall back up. This guy actually had the right idea. Um, he had a one by one with the roof over top. So tip number one is to always put a one by one and with a roof or whatever structure with a roof to provide coverage uh, for you, especially in the late game state, late stages of the game. Next tip has to deal with reviving. If you have uh, two teammates who are knocked or three teammates who are knocked, you should be the one who revives them, both of them, because when you revive the first guy, you'll give him time to heal back up while you're reviving the second guy or the third guy. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is, as you see me here, putting the roof over top, um, putting the flat down because my teammate had a uh, cozy campfire. Again, roof over top, one by one. So that's tip number two. Tip number three is actually going to be uh, when you're using a cozy campfire, make sure you bandage up all the way to 75 health because that'll get you to 100 uh, if you stay next to the campfire for the entire time. Um, another tip is to basically take the time in between battles uh, or firefights to rearrange your weapons, reload, um, switch ammo, upgrade your weapons, and heal up, obviously. So that's what you'll see us doing here. Uh, we're taking the time before we move to make sure we have everything organized. Um, we're still doing a little bit of looting because the teams um, are on the other side of the mountain and we have a little time to you know, be thorough. So you obviously heard a sniper or you may have heard a sniper in the distance. We now know that there's a team on the north side of the circle right now. So what we decided to do was to build on the south side of this mountain so they wouldn't see us uh, climbing up to this mountain. Um, the reason we did that is because we don't want them to have free shots at us or shoot our ramps out and make us you know, take fall damage. So there's the fort right there at the north. Um, so you know, like, like I said in my first episode of this, I always like to get the high ground and be the first to get high ground. Um, and, and set up because it gives you an advantage immediately. They have the advantage right now because they have a huge fort and they have the highest ground uh, left in the circle at the moment. So you'll see me taking a chug jug right now. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because I want to get 100 health and 100 shield. And basically, I don't think I would have 15 seconds later in the game uh, to be able to take a chug jug fully or fully take the chug jug. So right now we're just taking a look, trying to identify exactly where the other teams are that are remaining. Um, we have a general idea, but we want to confirm that they are uh, exactly where we, where we think they are. So what we're also doing is we're also taking a second to, uh, kind of let the storm close in on the circle so we can see where the next circle is going to go. Is it going to force us off of this mountain or is it going to force the other team off of the mountain or is it going to force both of us or both of our teams off the mountain? So that's why we're also taking it you know, a little slower than we normally would. So now we see that the circle is going to force us off of our mountain. So we're going to give up a little bit of our high ground 
and we decided to move early so the storm's not moving uh, while we're trying to move to the next circle. So we decided to drop down now and move ahead. And there's a team right in front of us who just hit a drop. So right after they hit the drop, we open fire on them because they're going to be you know, distracted or they might hesitate slightly uh, because of the loot that just came out of the, of the drop. They also might not have their gun out. So what you saw me do there is flank right and use ramps to flank. And I did that because I wanted to uh, give a different angle or get a different angle on the team that we're attacking. So I was able to get around back left and knock a guy um, right here. I don't know why I put up a wall and a roof right here, but <laughs> whatever. So now <laughs> both of my team teammates are down. Um, luckily, I pull out the shotgun kill that guy and it eliminated that team so now there are eight people left in the game again you'll see me come to revive my first teammate who got knocked so he's up now he's going to start healing he's going to reload his weapons start healing and i'm going to start reviving the second teammate so you'll see that my teammate is able to get about three or four bandages in um, while i'm reviving this gentleman so now, once I revive both my teammates, I'm going to get eyes on the next or the team, so our next threat. So I take a crossbow shot at one of the guys dropping off the mountain and follow it up with some AR. And you'll see me use the ramp and run technique here. So I'm going to use the ramps to cover myself a little bit and close the gap between myself and the enemies. So I'm able to knock this guy here. And then apparently he wasn't calling out to his teammate because this guy, this poor guy, had no chance. Um, he never saw me until it was too late. So and my teammates did a great job of distracting as well. So you notice there, uh, that's another tip, is if you know that your teammate has knocked another team's guy, then you need to immediately apply pressure. That's what a lot of teams don't get um, is when they knock somebody, they kind of lay back and let them you know, either get revived or, or either, uh, you know, get a good shot on them or, re you know, rearrange themselves or build a better fort or whatever. If you knock somebody, you should, you and your teammates should immediately apply pressure. It'll get them to panic in late game situations like this. So right now I am under the team that's on top. So there's three on three right now. And basically, um, they're about to drop down and they don't see me. They don't know where I am. They, they think that I'm over there with the other two, with my other two teammates. So this guy's here. My teammates are, you know, doing a wonderful job distracting them. And you know, now there's two of them down. So my teammate knocked one and noticed that they continue to apply pressure. Now I'm hitting them from a different angle because they never saw me. And, you know, again, my teammates are continuing to apply pressure and we end up winning the game. So, you know, big lessons in this in this episode. You know, when you're healing, make sure you're covered all around. If you're reviving, make sure you do the reviving for all your teammates so they can heal up while you're reviving the, the final guys. And also apply pressure when you knock a guy on another team. So just continue to apply pressure and you'll see your numbers will go up and your wins will go up. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Please be sure to subscribe, and I'll catch you in Episode 3.